There was a time back in October when no one in America would have predicted that the struggling Detroit Lions would ever make it to the playoffs. But come December, there they were, in Philadelphia and in the playoffs. They arrived as the hottest team in the NFL, riding a seven-game win streak. Advancing to the second round of the playoffs was the goal, but ultimately, not the reality. A remarkable playoff run came to a chilling end on a frost-bitten afternoon in Philadelphia. Their 38 points matched the most ever in a playoff loss. But touchdowns by David Sloan, Ron Rivers, Johnny Morton, and Herman Moore were not enough for the Lions to move on. The loss was a bitter disappointment and a stiff test of their character. This team has great character. Uh, every team I think I've coached with the Lions have great character. We've drafted that way. I think this team learned that if it stays together, it does have the character to win it all. With a quarterback coming of age, the Great Lakes offense became the league's top-ranked unit in 1995. An offense that took flight and broke every team record for total yards and points scored in a season. Beyond that, this was a team that survived a terrible start, broke out of a mid-season slump, and against all odds, took flight and made a dramatic late season run that earned them a trip to the playoffs for the third straight year. These movers, shakers, and record breakers have the character and the mental toughness to put the hard times behind them and prepare for the challenges of what is a promising future indeed. The 1995 Detroit Lions began their improbable season in Pittsburgh, where the Allegheny and Monongahela Rivers converged to form the mighty Ohio. Inside Three Rivers Stadium, the Lions converged on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Herman Moore took the first steps toward his first All-Pro season with a 10-catch, 131-yard day. Oh, over the yeah. shoulder, Herman Moore! What a catch! But the Lions took a step back victims of a last-second field goal. Hey, come on, the next week in Minnesota, two Lions on a collision course secured a Vikings win. Go. One time. Back, long, down the sideline, it's failed, and Tim Kisbell oh, no. to the 40, 30, 20, 25, touchdown Vikings. Brian McNeil and Benny Blades collided. In their home opener, the Lions recorded seven sacks and built a 17-6 lead. 39. Mitchell wants it over the middle. Wide open. Terrible. Only to see fumbles and penalties lead to another three-point loss in the final minute. And another long night for Wayne Fox. So what better way to put an end to an 0-3 start than on a Monday night against the defending Super Bowl champion 49ers? Of course, there was plenty to talk about. Mostly how it was a Monday night mismatch and how the undefeated 49ers should bury the winless Lions. Well, it might have made sense on paper, but these were no paper Lions. Mitchell back, pumps once, goes for Herman Moore, up for it, got it! Touchdown Lions, what a grab! In between Eric and Merton Hanks, Herman Moore for the touchdown. Holy mackerel, what a grab. San Francisco answered with a touchdown to tie the score at 24. But the Lions seized the opportunity to win in the final minutes when quarterback Scott Mitchell calmly directed a 15-play, 59-yard drive to set up Jason Hansen's fourth field goal of the game. to try to get the Lions the lead. He's pulled it, but he got it through. Holy back. What a thriller on Monday night. Boy, I tell you what, you like football. You don't get them any better than this football game tonight. 27 to 24, the Lions have beaten the Super Bowl champions. How about it? Two years in a row. Last year it was down in Dallas. Along with the win came a large dose of confidence that carried over to the following Sunday. 
The visiting Cleveland Browns had no answers on defense, especially when the question was, how do you stop Barry Sanders? All the way to Barry, that room 30, 35, 40, midfield, Barry off to the 40, 75 yards, Barry Sanders! The Lions built a 31-3 lead before winning by 18, but they didn't win again for three weeks until they returned home to pound the Packers. All three Lions touchdowns came courtesy of Herman Moore. And we'll take it to the end zone. Touchdown, Lions. The 24-16 win restored the roar for at least a week. But the Lions showed no signs of life in Atlanta. Mitchell, short drop, left, fire, picked off. This one may go the distance. Intercepted. Alton Montgomery to the 30, to the 20, 15, 10, 5, and a touchdown. He takes it. They fell to 3-6. and six and plunged further into the cellar of the NFC Central. The aftershocks from that defeat looked like the beginning of the end for head coach Wayne Fonts. I've got a great relationship with uh, my owner. Uh, he never came into me and uh, gave me an ultimatum. If he were to give me give one, uh, he would come to me and give me one. Uh, I read about it, I heard about it, it never bothered me, it never bothered our relationship, mine and my owner's, and uh, it never bothered the team. We, we, we knew we were uh, we were a better football team than we were playing, and it was just a matter of time, and uh, we kind of caught fire. One of the great understatements of the season. Mitchell with the drop to throw, looking left all the way, fires open, Sloan, touchdown, Lions! With a simplified offense in place, the Lions launched their bid to save the season. They are going to run a fake reverse, Barry keeps it, look out, far side, 50, he's gone! They'll never catch him! Oh, man! 55 yards. Detroit's chances of going to the playoffs still appeared slim and none. But Slim never quit, and neither did the Lions, as they broke a seven-game road losing streak in Chicago. Antonio London, Tracy Scroggins, Ryan McNeil, Tracy Hayworth, Robert Porsche, and Henry Thomas all came up big when they had to. Second down and one. Tied at 10. Deep hand off Barry. 25. Breaks it near side. 20. 15. 10. Barry's gone. Touchdown. Lions. Barry Sanders. And quarterback Don Mikowski just plain came up big. Filling in for an injured Scott Mitchell. The Magic Man threw for 161 yards and the game-winning touchdown. The 24-17 win wasn't exactly pretty. But the Lions' modest two-game win streak kept their playoff hopes, however remote, still alive. All they could do was control their own destiny and win the remaining five games on their schedule. The Silverdome was sold out for Detroit's 56th annual Thanksgiving Day game. It's over 70,000 fans and another national television audience were treated to a record-breaking offensive explosion, the likes of which had not been seen in Detroit in over a decade. Back pedals on first down. He's got Barry out of the backfield, goes to the end zone for Perriman. And he's got it! Touchdown, Lions! 534 total yards, the fourth highest total in team history. Oh, Johnny Morton! Oh, what a catch! Touchdown, Lions! 44 points. The most in a game since Thanksgiving Day of 1983. Herman Moore got it. A four touchdown Lions. Yes, touchdown. With that, the Lions became the first team in 37 years to have three receivers and a running back with over 100 yards apiece in the same game. The top gun in Detroit's aerial attack is a man who reached new heights in 1995, quarterback Scott Mitchell. If you look at any football team that then makes a great run in the end, uh, check that position, the quarterback position. And Scott Mitchell for us uh, just played a super last half of the season, and we end up being the number one offense team in football. And I think a lot of that is the quarterback. The quarterback and three sensational Mitchell receivers. Back to throw. Herman Moore, Brett Perriman, Perriman grab. and Johnny Morton. A diving grab Morton's ever-growing role in the Lions' offensive scheme produced 44 catches for 590 yards and eight touchdowns. 
That made him a valuable addition to the most prolific receiving tandem in NFL history. Herman Moore and Brett Perriman. For number 80, no two catches are alike. He feels as comfortable going over the middle as he does in the open field. And this flexible approach helped him to his finest season ever. 108 catches for 1,488 yards and nine touchdowns. Fires over the middle, caught getting away, Perriman to the 40, near side 30, he's gonna take it! 20, 15, 10, 5, and... Perryman creates an awesome challenge for any pass defense especially when Herman Moore lines up on the other side. Number 84 has improved in each of his five seasons in Detroit. The reason is simple. The man works hard at his craft. It's very important to be disciplined and uh, to go out and dedicate yourself to getting better and understanding that the minute you start thinking you've, you've reached your peak is the time you start to decline and uh, you stop working as hard. So I go out and each year approach it that there's something I need to work on and I dedicate myself to it. And because of that, I think it allows me to go out and maintain my self-confidence and uh, enhance my talents. Herman Moore enhanced his talents to the point of having one of the best seasons ever for a wide receiver. 1,686 yards with an NFL record 123 catches. 90 of those catches produced first down. 14 more produced touchdowns. Between them, Moore and Perryman combined for 231 catches, 3,174 yards, and were the first teammates ever to catch more than 100 balls each in the same season. Herman Moore, what a grab! Nobody does it better. And with Johnny Morton coming into his own, they shape up as one terrific trio for the future. Yes, life was good. As the Bears found out in week 14, the Detroit Lions saved their best football for the desperate days of December. Dances away to the 40, to the 35. Herman gets free, and he takes it in. Touchdown, Lions. Herman Moore, 47 yards, as he got away from two Chicago Bears. Barry Sanders took it to the end zone as well, as the Lions began their inexorable march through December. Henry Thomas, Antonio London, Robert Porche, and Tracy Scroggins all helped seal Detroit's third straight Monday night win and mark their first season sweep of the Bears since 1983. The high-flying Lions continued to soar in Houston. On a major roll, the defense forced a season-high six turnovers and added three sacks. The win put the Lions another step closer to the playoffs. And much of the credit has to go to the defense. Despite the attention given the number one offense in the NFL, the defense had their share of support. And they deserve it. This was a unit that struggled early in the year, then came on to play a key role in the Lions' late season surge. Acquired as an unrestricted free agent, tackle Henry Thomas lived up to his advanced filling with a career-high ten-and-a-half sacks. He also led the defensive line in tackle, and his leadership value cannot be measured. Thomas teamed with Robert Porche to give the Lions an inside push they haven't had in years. After three seasons at defensive end, Porche moved to tackle in the Lions' new four-man front. Number 91 sacrificed personal statistics, but the switch paid off for the good of the team. On the other side, linebacker turned defensive end Tracy Scroggins used his linebacker speed to pitch in with nine sacks. The Lions upped their sack total from 28 in 1994 to 42 in 95. And much of that increase is due to the play of Porsche, Scroggins, Thomas, and rookie Luther Ellis, who started all 16 games. And in their last nine contests, this swarming team defense forced 28 turnovers, including 15 in the final three games. 
The linebackers are a unit in transition. And while there's some reshuffling in store for 1996, a strong core remains. And as he has for the past eight seasons, safety Benny Blades remained a force in the secondary. During the Lions' seven-game win streak, Corey Raymond, Ryan McNeil, Van Malone, and the rest of the Lions' defense allowed fewer points, fewer first downs, fewer total yards, and allowed opponents less time of possession. A dramatic improvement across the board. Let's win this game. We have no letdowns. We can't have any letdowns the rest of this year. Everyone put forth an effort. Every single play. Is On December 17th, it happened. Both the Lions offense and defense played next to perfect games. And the Jacksonville Jaguars became the next victim of the Lions' 1995 comeback tour. Herman Moore and Brett Perriman made history when they became the most productive pass-catching tandem in NFL history. Hey, you know my mama be proud right now. Johnny Morton's mama was proud too. And Mrs. Rivers was proud when her son Ron scored his first touchdown as a lion. Rivers cuts it in. Touchdown, Lions, Ron Rivers. Takes it in, and that is his first touchdown. And a whole lot of mamas were bursting with pride as the Detroit defense set their sights on a shutout. Defensive backs Corey Raymond, Ryan McNeil, and Van Malone all had interceptions. Then with fourth and goal late in the game, Robert Porche and Scott Kowalkowski preserved the shutout as the Lions recorded the most lopsided regular season win in team history. Just one more game stood between the Lions and a guaranteed spot in the playoffs. I gave it to you! Gave it to you! I'll see you in Tampa next Saturday! Tampa, you have a problem, Tampa! Indeed, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers had a problem. Dilfer back, Dilfer fumbles. fumbles, picked up with a hop by Tracy Scroggins. Tracy Scroggins posted the Lions' only defensive touchdown of the year as Detroit ran out to a 17-0 lead. The defense forced four more turnovers and didn't allow a touchdown until the final period. <laughs> Meanwhile, behind first-time Pro Bowl center Kevin Glover, the Lions registered over 400 total yards for the seventh time in 1995. Into the 40, 30, and he takes it in. Touchdown, Lions, 91 yards. The Lions' seventh straight win marked their longest streak in 33 years and completed what was perhaps the most remarkable turnaround in the 62-year history of the franchise. At that point, the only drama left was played out by Herman Moore who set his sights on the all-time record for catches in a season. With his 123rd reception firmly tucked away, Moore called it a day. And the Lions concluded one of the most improbable seasons in their history. Every new season begins with more questions than answers. Back in September, no one was certain how the Lions' season would pan out. But there were a few things that everyone in the organization could count on. Death, taxes, and Barry Sanders. For seven glorious seasons, Barry's low-key, laid-back manner belies the level of energy he cuts loose on game day. Oh. This five foot eight inch giant of a runner turns your average end run into a double crossing, cut backing, zigzagging sprint. Like fireworks on the 4th of July, just when you think you've seen the best display, a better one comes along. It's no wonder that Barry is worshiped in the state of Michigan. 
His style is timeless. His lines are clean. His accomplishments unsurpassed. How do you describe Barry? Phenomenal, unique, disciplined, leadership. He's, he's in a class by himself. He does so many things so well. And just when you think you've seen it all, you haven't seen it. Oh. And Barry hitting the backfield, gets away from Schmingy on the sweep for the touchdown. Barry Sanders, by all rights, should have lost five yards on that play. But Barry Sanders is not your average back. Because no average back remains the cornerstone of every offense his team has designed for the past seven years. Barry Sanders breaks it off the right side. Because no average back has rushed for a thousand yards in each of his first seven seasons. Brother, 50 yards for Barry Sanders to pay their... Because no average back became just the 10th player in NFL history to go over 10,000 yards in a career. And all this in just seven seasons. For Barry Sanders, the final tally for 1995. 1,500 yards rushing, 48 catches for another 398 yards, 12 touchdowns, and a seventh straight Pro Bowl season. Is there anyone in the NFL more worthy of shameless adulation than number 20? Not likely. He's a guy you can count on year after year. Barry Sanders, a force of one. As has become his custom, Barry provided Lions fans with another season of unforgettable run. But he's got Barry Sanders, 47 yards down the Veterans like Barry Sanders, Herman Moore, and returning Pro Bowl center Kevin Glover provide nothing but inspiration for younger players like Ron Rivers, the Lions Special Teams Player of the Year. For all rookie team member David Sloan, who emerged as the Lions' tight end of the future. And for defensive tackles Shane Bonham and Mike Well. The future of the Lions' defense is promising as well. And made its point by improving in virtually every defensive category. The Lions draft for character, and character they've got. With a roster full of talent, including the off-season acquisition of Pro Bowl return specialist Glenn Milburn, they've laid the groundwork. And come September, the Detroit Lions will again prepare for takeoff and take flight.